Done. All right. Well, let's get started then. For today, we're going to be reviewing printers. Printers are essential companion for all hosts on a network. Even your actual mobile unit or phone, iPad, has a printer that they can actually use to be able to support their day-to-day -day services. In this session, we're going to learn about the different printers, types, and features in each. We'll also learn how to install an actual printer and identify the common issues and or pitfalls. Our ultimate goal by the end of this session is to be able to compare and, and contrast these different printers that we're talking about and name the steps installing them, identify the common pitfalls when you're going to install them and or the issues after they actually have been installed. Printers come in four major types. The categories are your laser, your inkjet, the thermal, and or, anyone know what's the last one? Impact. You like Impact. That printers. Made Impact printers, thank you. That was exactly what I was looking for. Ah. Overall, when we're configuring, repairing, and or maintaining these printers, it requires a knowledge of different types of printers and features available with each one. Understand how a printer works will allow us to quickly diagnose the actual issue and solve any problems with the actual user's printer. Common printer features include special printer language between the computer and the printer. And we obviously want to be able to perform routine maintenance to be able to extend the actual life of these printers because if we don't do that, then obviously they will die even quicker. Now, our behavioral skills for this, that is communication and personal responsibility. Overall, when it comes to personal responsibility, we need to understand that we need to be fully immersed in the actual issue and identify the issue. We need to be able to obviously be responsible. If this thing needs to be repaired, some users unfortunately will tell you, yes, they can wait. At the same time, we need to confirm, does this unit have a warranty? A lot of these things have a warranty time period. Therefore, whenever they report something, the first thing we should be doing is checking the actual date of it. Why, you may ask? Obviously, if it is physically the actual printer and there is something that we can do to get that replaced, especially in these Fortune 500s, they usually have what they call a SOX and or some other type of automated service where you fill out the actual form and they send you another printer. And obviously then they'll send that printer either back to the, uh, the actual manufacturer or they'll replace it in their centralized location. Also, we need to be able to identify the actual component that will be maintained. If it is something that we can actually do, then we obviously go and replace a toner cartridge and or any of the issues. We need to be able to commu communicate clearly ab about the actual details of the printers, obviously not using all this jargon that we're used to, but we need to make sure that we're able to help the client in the most efficient way. And when an issue is dealt with quickly and smoothly, the client feels less anxious, obviously, with the issue. We should obviously give them an alternative. If there is a temporary solution, maybe you let them uh, print to another printer on a given floor. At the same time, given the diversity in printers, you know that the, the actual clients are going to have a variety of needs and complex technical answers to be able to resolve this. We're going to learn as much as we can about these different types of printers and their features. And hopefully, even if we don't know, we should learn that in a given scenario, especially in iTeam, you're always part of a team. So you should be able to ask your colleagues within any of the locations that you're stationed with. Usually you have other people that you can talk to and or escalate issues if you're fairly new into here. The hardest part of 
willing to be able to learn about these different types of features and being able to be prepared is unfortunately to be able to demonstrate personal responsibility. We should take care of any opportunity to be able to learn from our actual mistakes and obviously learn to ask more, maybe open that in questions should, so that we can be able to continue to seek additional professional help and development if we do not know the actual answers of the issue itself. Any questions or concerns before we proceed? All right, as we mentioned just a moment ago, we have your impact, your inject, your thermal, and your laser. Those are your four major categories. When your actual impact printer, you have here, Marcus, help me out, please. You can read this slide for me. Impact printer features, printer that creates an image on paper by physically striking an ink ribbon against a paper surface. Best known impact printer is the dot matrix printer. A print head moves across width of the paper. Pins are used to print matrix of dots on the page. The pins shoot against a cloth ribbon. The ribbon impacts paper and deposits ink. Uh, they're slow and noisy. A dot matrix printer technology advantages include continuous tractor feed, allows event and data logging, can use carbon paper, uh, print multiple copies, used on OS, and extremely durable. Thank you. As we can see here in this uh, printer, it is one of the best ones that are out there still. I say uh, clucking or clocking, I don't remember that phrase. Either way, this is actually a simple one here. This is one of the smaller ones that you have. Your impact printer does come with a daisy wheel and or the actual impact printer itself where it's impacting either which way the daisy wheel one has every given character that it can create on a little uh, ball or circle wheel where then that guy just spins around and hits the actual ribbon with the character necessary. And the other one obviously just goes and he impacts and creates the actual and or characters or if it has like a little drawing, it will just continue to make the dots to be able to go across or the actual image by the impacts. What is great about this obviously is a feature in reference to the warehouses. Now these printers can be used and they're very, very durable. I can actually buy a humongous ream of paper which has continuous feed. On top of that, I can actually adjust the actual printhead and the distance between the actual wheels. So then now if I have a three part or a four part or a five part, even the actually the, uh, the form, if it is an A4, if it is a, actually eight and a half by 11, or if it is maybe uh, legal eight, eight and a half by 14, with ease, you can actually set these printers to be able to adjust, even if it is able to identify by the different tracks. It has a front track, it has a rear track, and some of them have about four tracks in the front and one in the rear. Depending, obviously, on what you're willing to buy, these printers can be uh, very costly. At the same time, what's great about these actual multi-part forms, usually in the actual warehouse, when you're creating packing slips themselves, packing slips are the little things that are inside the actual box, which states the whole order and what was inside the box. Therefore, now you could actually peel this, you can keep it in a warehouse, write whatever notes you want, and put another copy for the actual client inside the packing slip envelope. Any questions or concerns on an impact print? Okay, no questions. Inside the actual inkjet printers, it uses a print head now to be able to, to connect the, the to a cartridge that contains the actual ink. Now this is moves on a belt and motor around the carriage back and forth to be able to create the actual whole page. The spray then obviously is ionized ink onto the paper to form the images using a matrix of what they call small dots. What are these actual things? The small dots are the actual print resolution or your DPI, which is your dot per inch. In many cases, the higher the DPI, obviously the, the better, better the quality 
And some of these obviously are rated at the same time in the actual print speed and what it is called the PPMs. A lot of them obviously is if they contain color and, and there are black and white, they'll give you the actual two numbers saying exactly what they can do for the actual color versus what they can do for black and white. They are very, very good quality and they're very reasonably fast. Obviously, usually this is for low, low consumption for maybe a single user or maybe two to three users. Since the cost of these inkjets sometimes cost almost as much as the printer. Questions or doubts? We'll see here now an actual printer itself. Inside the printer, you'll see that it has a printer feed on the top end here. It has the actual little uh, control circuitry. Can somebody tell me what is this control circuitry board? That'd be the interface. External interface, correct. But what would it be similar to be for any given device that we're talking technology device? What is a CCB equivalent to a control circuit board? Uh, CPU. Ooh, so close, but it's mini computer. Again, very close. It's I green. Think you mean like a it. motherboard? Are you right? talking about motherboard? Thank you, thank you. It is a motherboard. Oh. Any CCB. When you see CCB, that technically is the motherboard. You'll see this inside hard drives themselves. They'll put CCB, which is a cir control circuitry board. It is the one that controls the given device. Makes sense. Okay, now we have the actual ribbon cable itself, which comes to the actual little carriage. And now the little babies here, which is your black or your actual uh, different colors, go into those two cartridge slots. You have the actual belt in the background over here, which actually moves it to the left and right. And then you have the actual paper, which gets pulled down, which slowly creates the image. The heating element itself is the one that causes this to be able to create the little dots to start coming out. And obviously it starts creating a little bubble and creating a little dip DPIs in each spot. Question or doubts? As for the maintenance, you can see that here it has some rollers and these rollers are meant to be easily accessed and or maintained. The same thing when it comes to these printers over here, these printers themselves also have maintenance kits that you can actually change <clears throat> different parts, including the actual, obviously the ribbon and or the motor, depending on obviously if you have warranty or not, you could just send it back in and they'll send you a, a refurbished one. Any question? or doubts. Okay. Next one here, if you can help me out, Chris. Sure. Thermal print features. Description, uses heat to create an image. Two types of thermal printers. Direct thermal printer, burns dots onto special coated paper, thermal paper often used as receipt printers. Thermal transfer printer, uses a ribbon that contains a wax-based ink. Heating elements melt ribbon onto thermal paper, used to print receipts, barcode labels, clothing labels, or container labels. Reliable and easy to maintain. Thank you. As for these two printers, they do come in little different various size or forms. The first one, which is the direct Thermal, most of you are used to these zebra printers out there. They're the ones that are little small ones about yay high and they have the actual labels inside that comes through. And it obviously, since it is a special paper, it will be able to burn the actual image onto the paper. Be careful since this paper looks identical to the other paper, which is the one that we're talking about, which is the thermal transfer printer. This one though does not have that special coating. This one is expecting an a actual ribbon that's gonna be riding on the same area. You'll be able to feed the actual black ribbon into the paper and then you have the, the actual labels itself on its own wheel. 
you lock it into place. And when it pushes through the actual ribbon or wax, then based ink is heated up and melted onto the thermal paper. This one it obviously usually lasts much longer and is used in, in a lot of these barcodes that are going onto the boxes, depending obviously if you can cough up that type of money. But usually the other people, which are us who are not that fancy, will prefer the cheaper model, which is the direct thermal. Either which way, it does create a label vibe. Obviously, one is be being able to either burn it directly or by being able to melt it and transfer the actual ink to it. Question, doubts. Your laser printers. Um, Kimberly, please help me out, please. Laser printer features <clears throat> produce high quality and high speed of text and graphics using the process of e uh, electro um, photographic imaging. Use toner, which is more permanent than ink are um, non-impact devices that uh, press, um, sorry, <laughs> um, pressly, um, place precisely place toner mm -hmm. on paper range from low value person, personal use to high volume, multi-user use are, are more expensive to purchase but cheaper to operate. Color printing is writing process repeated four times from four toner cartridges, black, cayenne, um, mm -hmm. magenta, and yellow. The black toner is typically carbon melted mixture uh, mixed with a polyester resin while color toner trays carbon for other pigments. As for your laser printers, obviously, the majority that you've seen out there are your black and white ones. Those are the traditional ones. Please be careful with those as they are very, very photosensitive. That means any given light that hits the green drum that's inside can actually damage the drum if it's long term, long term exposed to the actual light. It will create, unfortunately, a line on there and then obviously then rendering it completely useless. Either which way, it does use uh, a toner and or other pigments to be able to burn the image on there. The laser printer itself and or the components are the paper transport, your, your actual logical circuits, your user interface, your toners, your photosensitive drum, and we'll get into the details of each of those that we see here. There is seven steps within all those steps that are in here and his actual process of when he is actually creating the actual image and it uses each of them to be able to do the job. We need to be able to identify exactly what the primary Corona, Transfer Corona and or any of the other devices that are in here does to be able to facilitate the process. Out of the seven steps of uh, laser printing, we have steps one and two. If you can help me out here, please. Camille. All right, step one is processing image. The CPU processes the request and sends the job to an area of memory called print spooler, which enables to create a queue of multiple print jobs. When the printer's hardware receives the job, it processes the image, generating a, a rat raster image, mm -hmm. bitmap mm -hmm. of bitmap of final page. And then second step, conditioning or charging to make the drum receptive to new images. Its surface is charged negatively between negative 600 and negative 1000 volts. As we can see these, thank you very much. These puppies eat up volts. It's very dangerous when you're dealing with these printers specifically these printers, which is the laser printers, we need to ensure that we don't go and put this on a UPS. 
you could even sometimes trip some of these actual power surge protectors. It is beneficial to have it on it, but it, it is well known that they can even trip the actual power strip if depending how uh, how much it's pulling. So therefore you need to have the correct type of power strip there to be able to do the job. As for the first step, this is when the actual CCB itself receives the actual image. And now it's gonna go and create one page at a time, the actual image. And from there, then it continues to send it to the actual second step, step itself, which is con considered the conditioning or the charging of the actual drum. What it's gonna do is now play the little game as we used to do with a balloon. Anybody ever play with a balloon in their hair? No one? Somebody humor me. Nobody played that? Well, the ice cream truck it. saved me. Ice cream truck saved me. <laughs> yeah, you, you can rub a balloon in your hair, and then you can stick it to the wall or other. OK. As we mentioned right before the break, any questions in reference to the step one, which is the processing of the actual image versus the conditioning or charging, as we stated, the processing of the image here is different than the other ones. This one does it exactly one page at a time versus the actual thermal print. It does it all. If we notice in a thermal print, it will spit out all the labels real quick. Same as our impact printers that will actually spit it out without having to even wait. As soon as you actually sent the print job, it all goes through. Can anyone humor me and tell me is a dot matrix printer, if we read, is that a page printer or is does that do all of it? That would be a, it would be a page printer, right? Because it doesn't have any onboard memory. Everyone agree? We're talking about dot matrix, correct? Do we know what a dot matrix printer is? Anyone? Yeah, it's an impact printer. Okay, so if it's an impact printer, would it do continuous all at the one time or is, or is it just one uh, page at a time? Oh, okay, no, I get it. I misunderstood, yeah. It's gonna only do like a line at a time, right? It's noisy. Like as well, it goes. It's, it's very, it's the same uh, for me, for my understanding, it's the same as a thermal. I understand, yes, it is slower, but as soon as it receives the print, some of them are so fast. If you've seen the real big ones, they'll just go and they just keep on printing. They could print a lot of pages because it's all just coming through as fast as possible. Same thing with, with our thermal. So our impact, which can be either a dot matrix printer, which is an impact printer, or a daisy wheel impact printer. Then the other printer that we learned was the inkjet printer, which gets confused with the dot matrix printer a lot. And the inkjet printer, now that print that printer itself also, I believe, is the same as the laser printer, because it has the actual print server inside. Oh. I could be wrong, as I said, I've always been never wrong but just misinformed so if you read something different please correct me i would love to update my database no anyone yes no do we understand the difference between the two So your laser printers and your inkjet printers, since they have this little print server, usually internal, internal and 
since it's able to do this high quality printing, it must process one page at a time. It then ejects the page and now it does this exact same process when we're coming to the laser printer here and it's gonna do these seven, uh, this seven steps. As for the actual ink jet printers, they have their own process as we mentioned a moment ago, but before it does that, we saw that it internally process it. It, can, it goes and process the actual image and then spits one page at a, at a time. The other ones is continuous. As soon as you spit it out to the printer, it's all coming out. Nothing really to that's going to hold it back. I know with inkjets, you can uh, print on the front and back of the same page. Can you do that with the laser printer? Some pr laser printers are sophisticated enough to be able to feed the paper back and do the other side, yes. Oh, okay. Not all, but uh, they do have that feature. Any other question before we proceed? Everyone okay? All right. We feel nice, warm, and toasty. Now we went into step two. And in step two, we stated that this puppy is now going to go and charge anywhere between negative 600 and negative 1,000. What happens here is he's equivalently to going like this and charging this puppy up. As we know, opposites attract. The moment that we're gonna do this little trick, hopefully we understand, just like we said, it will stick to the wall, right? The little balloon now sticks to the wall because of its variance in charge compared to the wall. Now that we played that game, hopefully as kids, we can proceed to the next part. Number three itself, if we can get a little bit of help here. Um, Ronald, please. All right, number three, exposing. A laser creates a positive image on the surface of the drum by releasing negative charges on particles. I'm sorry. Yeah, of particles hit. Number four, developing. Those particles with a lesser negative charge attract toner particles and create a developed image. Number five, transferring. Transfer corona gives the paper positive charge and the negative charge particles leap from the drum to the paper. Number six, fusing. Two rollers melt toner to the paper through heat and pressure, permanently affixing it. And number seven, cleaning. Drum is, cl drum is cleaned of residual toner and charge using an erase lamp and a cleaning blade. Okay, thank you very much. So here in the step three is where the laser comes and plays a little Etch-a-Sketch game. Anyone remember Etch-a-Sketch? A little drawing that you could do with the two little wheels. So that's just, remember that little game, he's now gonna go with the laser and he's gonna go and create a positive image onto the drum. We just said it. it's charged with negative 600 to negative 1000, the whole thing. But this little space where that laser is hitting is gonna be on the positive charge. Feel me out. So parts of it's negative, parts of it's positive. Now on the developing itself is where the these particles with the less negative charge attract the actual particle, which the negative less negative is the actual one that that has the actual uh the the one that has the one hundred I believe at that point negative one hundred. Next is where he's actually transferring it to the actual positively charged. So as soon as he hits it, this par particles basically jump and go towards the paper. Since the paper is the one that has the highest charge is where the highest attract is. So we had our negative one, 600 to 1000. Then there's another part that's uh, uh, at one point almost negative 100, right? When he actually transfers and he hits it, as soon as he does that, all this gets stuck to the wall as the balloon did. Now that he's stuck to the wall, technically, if you remember, if I just tap the balloon, 
it will fall from the wall. So how does he make sure that this particle that just leaped onto the paper stays to the paper? By the next step, he gets an iron. In this case, it's the fuser. He's gonna press with two strong rollers, which is very hot. Whenever you're dealing with a fuser to replace, please. Hopefully we have unplugged it because we just heard the word negative 1000 volts. That's the first thing we should hopefully do. Now that we're not touching this, hopefully that also that it's been turned off and it's not hot. We should know that this thing always melts it on and compresses it. So if at any point, if I take out that piece of paper and it falls off like dust, or I can actually smear the actual page, there's something wrong with the fuser. The iron is not actually melting it and adhering it permanently to the actual paper. Lastly, hopefully it doesn't happen to you guys, but maybe those that ever lived in New York and remember when you're actually stuck in traffic and that annoying sponge came flying across and hits the, your actual front windshield, he's got that little blade that needs to clean your actual window. Well, that blade is actually inside. Well, not that one, but you can say that it's similar to that blade is inside this actual drum. It is cleaning now the actual blade or the internal part of the actual drum to remove the image and any other toner that's excess on still the drum. Any questions? I believe also on the labs that we have uh, more details and we have some videos from PowerCert and Professor Messer that uh, goes also into the details. And I am very sure the book says exactly the voltages that it does it in and it specifies all these steps also. As for your virtual printers, these are obviously not real printers, but they are capabilities to be able to print to the virtual world. What do you mean? The digital world, in other words. You can print to a file, print to PDF, XPS, print to an image, whatever you like, you can do that nowadays with ease. Obviously back in the day, you couldn't do that, but all these features are available to you now. Specifically, if you have Windows, you have the capabilities of XPS. If you don't have Windows, then you could obviously print to any given file and or the PDF or an image. Questions or doubts? on virtual printing. No parts, obviously, just a driver to install. So that's the same as like converting a file? Like to yeah, instead of converting the, the Word file to there, let's say you're at a website and you don't have the file. So now you can go to the website and go to say to print. But when you hit print, instead of printing to the actual printer, you could choose to print to a file. That was not an option before in, in the latest Windows and or operating systems. Now you can actually print to a given file. So it's like taking a dot, dot .x file and turn it into a PDF? Yeah. Uh, I'll show you here. You see this? Uh, you can still see my web browser? Yeah. <clears throat> OK. Back in the days, if I wanted to go and print something, I come in here and I hit print. Now, automatically, you'll see that I have my printer on my network, but I can go to OneNote. I can save as a PDF. I can save to the Google Drive, or I can see more if I have other choices, as we see here. OK. So instead of printing directly to a printer, I can print anything into a file or OneNote or whatever else I have installed that allows me even to a fax. Hmm. Okay. That help out? Yeah. Right. Cool. So for the common actual PCLs or uh, printer language, and in other words, the way that it communicates, right? You have your ASCII, if we all remember, that's the one that has the 100 and, sorry, 256, is it? Yes, yeah, 256 known characters, right? No, zero through two, six, yeah, 255. Okay. Myself. Some of these printers obviously have the capability of PostScript, which was developed by Adobe. 
the image processing is done by the actual printer, not by the PC CPU. You have the actual PCL, which is a printer control language, which was developed by HP. Next, we have the Windows, which is a, uses the GDI or the graphics device interface to handle the print functions. Then it sends it to the actual printer and the XML or, or the actual XPS format that's able to print out as we saw there, it's a file XPS. Inside the actual printer's box, we're able to actually adjust with ease any of these features that we see. So look at this guy, printers, got the nose, manage. So in here, You can see the printer itself. I'll be able to go and change any of the stuff that I want to do, be that I want to share it. If I want to trick it, maybe the actual uh, software is thinking that it should have an LPT1. So I can select LPT1 and the given port that I'm still on and hit OK in the ship that I have to hold. I know you should be able to do both. Obviously, it's not letting me today. And you can actually trick it. Obviously, maybe I have to create an IP directly. That might be the reason why. Either which way, you have the capabilities also to print or after the last page, or you could change if it's available at what time. You can even change the quality of color of what's going to print itself and or any of the page type sizes in here. So if we want to go into here, we can change if it's landscape, portrait, change the actual size of, or the color, change your glossy paper, and both sides flip on the short edge. Okay, all from here, front to back. I click into advance and it'll let me select exactly what type of paper is in here. Same thing with the graphics quality, if I want to put it higher which is what we said, the DPIs. Monochrome. All that from here. Any questions? Out so far. All right. Anyone know what correlation is? Sure, it's when it sorts the um, the pages in the order of the file for you. Thank you. Some printers, or as long as I believe here, either even here, as long as you're doing it through the actual OS itself, you should be able to select if it's going to do it. In other words, you want eleven copies of the exact same document. Do you want it to print one, 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 11 times and then two, 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 11 times? Or do you want it to actually do the actual one, two, three up to 11 and then 11 times go ahead and print it out in its given order? On top of some of these actual laser printers are so sophisticated that they'll even punch holes and or staple them for you. Yes, all that from the actual windows that you saw there, you could actually choose those features. Any questions or doubts? Connecting and installing. You can help me out here, please, Camille. All right, printers can connect to a local computer or a network. Local printers connect through USB, Wi-Fi, serial or parallel ports. And network printers connects through Wi-Fi or ethernet. Most local printers are plug and play compatible but all require drivers to communicate with computers. Windows 7 has many drivers built in or drivers can be downloaded from the manufacturer's website. It uses either 32-bit drivers for a 32-bit OS or 64-bit drivers for a 64-bit OS. Thank you. As we see nowadays, 
thank to plug and pray, as we like to call it, or plug and play in reality. It, we are now able to, with ease, install a printer. In most cases, it has to be in the HCL, which is hardware compatible list within Windows to be able to facilitate this process. And or you can manually go ahead and insert the disk or download the drivers yourself to be able to install it. It gives you those features. And on top of that, as we stated, we could actually install the 32-bit or 64-bit drivers to be able to facilitate anyone that's got actually in, trying to install it from my printer queue. At the same time, we need to ensure that my given print server or whatever it is that's actually doing this, if it's my computer or an actual server, that it has the correct drivers for itself. I understand we can put whatever drivers we want on it, but its primary driver has to be the correct driver so they can actually drive, right? As for any other drivers, you can put in the actual additional tab as we saw the other day where you go into it and I've been the other class and select the actual uh, additional drivers for the printers. I should read out far. Can you still see that my whole desktop? Mm -hmm. well, well. All right. No? See? All right. You'll see here that this is the driver that is using. I can actually add additional drivers to it from this window here. I can actually go ahead and make a hat. No, I'm just kidding. I can actually share it itself. And over here, if it had the other features, I can add the additional drivers so that anybody else that's coming in can do it. So if I'm having problems with the current driver, I can come in here and add and manually change it to whatever driver I want. And then when I'm sharing it, I can add the additional drivers. Obviously, since this is not a server, it's not gonna let me do that. Questions or doubts? All right, the basic local steps for plugging into the actual connector of the port and network, if it is actually a network one, if it's not, you're gonna be connecting obviously via USB, turn on the actual printer. And if the actual uh, manufacturer has a CD or something that you can use to be able to set it up, go ahead. Otherwise you could go into Windows itself and just go into the open printers and click on the actual add printer and go through the actual wizard of installing the printer. Usually it is able to even sniff on the network if it is physically on the network and see that this given IP, which is a printer at that uh, since by Mac address, it can identify that it is a, a, a printer. Now I can say, hey, this printer hasn't been installed. Would you like to install it? It's going to give you a list of the printers that are available and you'll be able to print them themselves by following the actual wizard. In some cases, they might, that might not work completely and you might have to update the drivers as we saw in the window and update specifically that driver so you could be able to print. Always at the end, always from the actual window that we saw earlier of printers, we want to do a print test page. Never ever do it outside do it inside the actual windows of the setting and click on the actual print test page. Why would I want to do it here and not inside the Internet Explorer or Chrome? Anyone? Hello? Okay, we need to also uh, identify or minimize different things here, right? If I am printing from this screen, I'm technically printing from the OS. I have completely eliminated a program from the actual equation. If I print from a given program, the program can be the issue and not the actual printer. Therefore, 
Troubleshooting 101, the least intrusive way to be able to print or test something is coming directly into this queue and pressing here, compared to going and printing from any other application. Questions are done. All right. Print servers. This is could be hardware or software itself that manages the print jobs that is sent. Hardware are those little devices and or it could be a server itself contained on and writing on the actual OS. Either which way, these things are to facilitate the process of being able to manage the actual stuff that is printing on that given device. It can be dedicated software to that is the device with the software that is installed, as we said, some of these HD printers are so sophisticated that you can directly go through a web browser and look at its internal print server and maintain and or update that print server itself. As for the Windows print management itself, monitors and manages the printer's queue for all of the printers on a given network. In print management, each computer on the network that shares a print server is considered a print server. At the same time, it has its own internal print spooler services that's running. Therefore, if there's any issues with a print server, we're talking about Windows here, and the within the OS, we're able to go and disable that service and re-enable the service to see if that actually fixes the issue. Yes, believe it or not, that actually fixes the issue 99.9 .9 without having to take the server down. Questions are down. As for these little things, we'll notice that inside is actual embedded things. One of the things you can do is the actual page counter, which obviously we need to reset whenever we do a maintenance kit. Therefore, if we grab a maintenance kit and we replace the rollers, we replace all the usual wears and tears, right? We take, just like in a car, you're gonna go change the tires, you're gonna go change the brakes, you're gonna go change whatever it is that it usually does. Some people just leave all the same spark plug always and never change the oil. I mean, that's your own choice, but let's get into reality. There is gonna be a kit of all the things that you need to replace yourself as an IT individual and be able to identify and replace these things. The moment that that happens, we should be going in there and resetting the counters to ensure that obviously we have the correct counts. Questions or not? Steps for sharing a printer that is installed. Within the actual printers themselves, you're able to share it as we saw in the actual printer properties that I had earlier. I can go into the actual properties, click on share, and go ahead and put a nice cute little name and hit okay. The moment that I do that, if I supposedly go onto a given network, I should be able to go ahead and check Sorry. And supposedly DC printer should be somewhere in the owner oh no, because I have installed it's not even showing. I don't think it's gonna show me. But I should be able to see the whole network infrastructure. Here's the printer that I have, here's a scanner that's available. And if I had a second computer and I was virtuing out there, it should be able to see the DC printer that's being shared. Any questions or concerns? You guys like my router's name? Local, me no enter. No, I thought it was cute. All right, Over, overall, you can turn it off or on and choose however it is that you want to be able to do it within the actual uh, print sharing services and or the window that we just saw. Any questions or doubts? Obviously, if I had the correct version of Windows, for instance, Enterprise, I believe Pepe has that. I should be able to, with ease, 
the pepper was turned off. That's why I probably didn't see it. People turn pepper. There we are, Pepe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enters. Hey, mouse from there. I always hate myself. They always got to move this stupid button. All right, here we are. Sharing. Now, we'll see Pepper there and his name. Now I can come in here and I can add the 64 bit. I can go here and hit this one, hit OK. And I can now add the actual drivers from that I downloaded from the internet. It will ask me to go ahead and insert it and hit OK. And it should, at that point, put it in without any problem. Any questions or doubts? Now we can see Pepe PC. And inside Pepe PC, did I put it? No, I didn't. All right. But you can see it on the network since I am sharing it. We should be able to go type to it. Let's see. That's a PC. And I don't think we're seeing what you're seeing. Yeah. You can't see it. You can't see my share? No, nah, it's just showing uh, the same screen. I don't how's see that? it. How's how's that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Much better. Uh, give me a second. Close this guy over here. Can you see him now? Mm -hmm. So yes. in my network, I was able to go to Pepper PC and you'll see that on the network, Pepper printer is there. So if with ease, if I wanted to go to the actual printer, I should be able to go ahead and put Pepper printer. For instance, if I wanted to install it and it will allow me to install it. But since I already have it installed, I don't have to do that. I could even hit connect and it's just gonna try to, but it's not gonna show me anything because he's already there. I don't know. Oh, that's cute. Here he is. Any questions or doubts? I keep on hitting that. Yeah, we've got to change the spot, Diego. That's Windows 7 for you. Any questions? Doubts? Here's your sharing, the buttons. As we said earlier, you can change the drivers. We can have it changed to it to print after the last page is full. Whatever choices that I want to do, I should be able to do with you. No questions. No doubts. All right. I better sleep. And back to our previous program. There are two ways to install a share printer. As we said in the Windows Explorer, we can go to network and or network places in the window. In the control panel devices and or print window within Windows 7, we can actually add it specifically by adding a actual IP. If we know the IP of the printer, instead of specifying, let's say the LPT1 port or USB port, we can actually add an IP port and it will name it the actual IP that you gave it and the name port at the background. 
any questions or doubts on that one. So, I didn't mean to say anybody knows what that is. Mm. Ports. I can actually add a given port. Instead of a local port, I can actually hit this button here and say that the port is whatever IP I desire. Hit next, and then it'll go and, and detect that guy. And obviously, since he's not there, it's not going to any questions for that. Always scares me when it's quiet. Crickets are very, very scary. You can actually access the printer queue itself by double clicking on the printer icon and obviously clicking on reviewing the spool. But the spool itself will show you all the printers that are in, all the print jobs that are inside the printer itself. You can actually stop it, pause it, cancel everything, or just cancel one specific document, whatever is your pleasure. Since you have control of the actual print queue per se, you can do anything you like at that point. Any questions or doubts? As for our routine maintenance, we should be hopefully routinely cleaning these de devices because of the fact that it does extend the life of the actual printer. We must follow the actual manufacturer's directions for these given devices. We can clean the outside by using a dry, or sorry, a semi-damp cloth on the outside or uh, drying it off with a, those special little wipes that they have, which is like a little alcohol one that they have. Never, ever, 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 ever use compressed air on a printer, please. You're only gonna make something get stuck even worse than what it was because of the fact that if you're going and pushing this compressed air, Specifically, I like say on the laser printers, you now you got toner flying everywhere. It's going to go into your lungs because you're not going to have an actual uh, right mask on that's, that's going to avoid that toner from going into your lungs. Two, if you get lucky and you're doing that to an impact printer, you may actually lodge those little circles even worse in there. There is special actual vacuum cleaners and or magnetic brushes that allow you to be able to with ease, clean these actual printers. Any questions or doubts? As for the later one we have here, or the latter two here, we have a printer software may contain a program that will actually clean the inkjet nozzles. That's a test question. I don't know about this one, but I know they will test you to say which one can actually clean itself and or calibration, calibration of the headset. Inside the inkjet printers, specifically those that may have seen the old ones, you used to have to print out something and then you had to choose on your own by letters of one, uh, A through Z or something. And, and then maybe the next one was ones. And it says which one was the most clear, clean, uh, sorry, the clearest image that you see out of all of these. Nowadays, it just prints out the thing. And since it usually has a built in scanner, all you have to do is just scan the actual paper that it does and it self calibrates to be able to obviously cr create a crisp image based on what it saw and what was the best alignment for each color and or for each, obviously, uh, be black, magenta, cayenne, or yellow. Questions or doubts? All right, next up here, when problems arise, remember always document everything and hopefully take some pictures if you're taking these things apart for the first time, always take pictures. I understand, yes, the majority of them have a maintenance kit would more likely have hopefully a picture there, step-by-step step of what you're removing. 
until I actually know what I'm doing, right? You can, uh, you can also use the online support tools. Usually they have documentation that tell you how to put Humpty Dumpty back together on top of having the updated drivers and or any additional software that can obviously help you troubleshoot this device. Any questions? Next slide here. If you can help me out, please, Joseph. Sure. <clears throat> problem solving strategies, local printer problems, problems with the printer, steps to try, verify the printer is on, then try printing a test page. If the test page does not print, use the troubleshooting in Windows to locate the issue. Out of memory error, steps to try. Internal RAM memory memories, hold print jobs and font. So adding memory can speed up performance. Thank you. In reference to the actual problems with the printer, which is the first one, always verify that it's on. You'll be surprised once again how that might actually fix your issue. What do we mean by that? Sometimes people are cleaning in these warehouses and these locations and by mistake, they're not noticing what they're doing. They may be coming and maybe tripping the little uh, power surge protector or the power strip that it should be on. It shouldn't. Some of these things, as we said, the laser printer sometimes won't work with a power surge protector if it's too strong. It'll trip the actual power surge protector every single time. Either which way, that's one of the reasons why we should always check if it's on and then do a printer test page from the printer uh, printer actual queue from the actual OS, printer not from an application. Yep. Not from an application. If you print from an application, that is useless, unfortunately. It may print, but you if there is an issue with the application, you have just tricked yourself into believing that maybe the problem is the actual printer. The next one we have here is the actual out of memory error. This happens a lot to laser printers and other types of printers that have their own internal printing spools, even the ones that are have the CCB with their own little memory. Obviously, usually, the, although a lot of the ones that I've seen that allow you to add memory would be the laser and or, obviously, we're talking about expensive printers here. Usually, the cheap ones don't have these features. You can actually put an actual extra RAM chip into the laser, and there is some ink check real fancy ones that I've seen that you can actually add more RAM to them too. I don't think I've ever seen it on the cheap versions of the impact printers. I do believe that in the big ones in the warehouse, you could add an extra RAM module to those, I believe. You mean those gray bar printers, green bar printers? The dot matrix yeah, screen the bars. Green, the, the green yeah, bar they had like um, the one megabyte and the 256 mm -hmm. kilobyte memory modules. Mm -hmm. That is correct. But if we have yeah, an hour of memory up. error on a laser printer, the best first step is reboot it. Mm -hmm. turn, turn it, it off, off and turn, turn it, it back off. on. Mm -hmm. That is everything. Yes, turning it off and turning back on will help you. In, but in a lot of the cases, though, we need to realize that if it is on a print server and you're still having this issue, there should be then unfortunately a problem with this printer because we know that this is a one page at a time printer and hopefully we configured the print spooler to be doing his job correctly. He should only be receiving one page at a time. One of the issues that may be that it, it does not contain the font that you're trying to throw at it either. Some of these printers are not meant to print out certain fonts. Therefore, you decided to use a font that it cannot handle. And it may actually give you some ish issues as out of memory, or even worse, it does decide to print and it prints a whole bunch of weird characters. Okay. Next slide here. You can please help me out, Alvarez. Problem solving strategies, network connectivity problems. Um, verify printer is the default. Check printer's IP address. Verify printer is online. Ping the printer using the command line. Reboot the computer. 
uninstalled and reinstalled the printer, use diagnostic utilities or software. Thank you. So these are the common ways that we can actually troubleshoot. One of the things, believe it or not, especially since these users sometimes have a plethora of printers, they unfortunately went and they started printing out a whole bunch of labels. So what did they do to make it easier for themselves? The default printer is the thermal printer. Next. Or they might have just changed something that was not the correct and they want to print to that one. And as as the other one was up or both are in the printer room, there's usually a printer room, believe it or not, a huge room where all the printers are, especially in the warehouses where it's very loud. So now since that printer is over there and it's not next to that person, they continue to go to the dot matrix printer, but it keeps on spitting it out on the laser printer and they're not noticing that hence verify that the printer is the default printer that they're trying to print to because that obviously some of these applications do not ask. They automatically just use whatever the default printer is. The next one, as we said, there is ensure what is the printer IP. Hopefully we have that on a list somewhere or maybe a label on the actual printer, depending on how it is that you have in, in this company. And then verify it is online, ping it. Can you actually ping this IP on the network from the actual device? Be maybe from your computer, or if you can actually ping from your computer, make sure you can actually ping from theirs, which is the actual client that's trying to actually get to that printer. Reboot the actual computer and or the printer itself as a state there and uninstall and reinstall any print drivers just in case if that is given the issue. Obviously, if there is no issues with anyone else in the, in the given floor, therefore this one where we're saying of uninstalling and reinstalling the printer would not be obviously an issue. We might actually check the additional drivers that we might want to install in case if that OS does not, or that OS drivers for that specific PC is incorrect. Any questions or doubts? Next one here. Uh, Ronald, please. All right. Problem solving strategies, shared printer problems. Print a test page from the local computer, verify correct default printer selected and online. At remote computer, verify access to the computer to which the printer is attached. Delete printer and reinstall. Verify hard drive space. Thank you. As we see here, repetitive nature is to print the test page from the actual local print a computer itself and verify that it actually is online. It's repetitive in nature. And this is what we're talking about is a shared printer compared to just a network printer or network connectivity to an actual printer. Here directly, they're talking about something that is shared on the network from an actual print server with most likely maybe a server OS on it. And therefore we need to verify that it is online and we can access it. Any question or doubts? Why would I want to verify hard drive space? Because the print spooler uses hard drive space to put the printer page in memory. Thank you. Therefore, if it's running out of hard drive space, you may be having issues. The next one we have here is in reference to problem solving strategies for Windows or applications. Delete all print jobs. Once again, this is your friend. I know it's annoying for the user himself, but then we could actually identify because of the fact, again, he or she may be using an actual application that is writing garbage to this and it's stuck. Therefore, if we delete everything and allow people to come back, it should hopefully help and relieve the issue. Otherwise, we could delete everything, stop the actual spooler services, the print spooler services inside Windows, and then turn it back on, and then obviously start back the actual printer from being offline. We need to verify any cable connections itself to make sure, obviously, that once again, cleaning people every single day, passing by, other people trip onto these things. Sometimes these actual print printer rooms are not in a very good location, 
and or worse, maybe the, the people are just so rough with the equipment when they're cleaning and they're just pulling it and putting it all apart. This happened a lot, obviously. And unfortunately, we even had to escalate the issue where we had plant engineering and industrial engineering involved to ensure, obviously, that these cleaning people, which were contracted workers, were obviously doing their job correctly and avoiding, obviously, ripping off that network cable from the wall or the power cable, depending which way they pulled that device. Any questions? Why would I want to print to a file? What, what, how does that help me? It's still using the printer's um, driver to print. To make sure it prints. No, it's not going to use it's the printer. It's testing your spooler. Thank you. Mm. That's exactly what it's doing at that point. It's not going to test the drivers because it will print the PDF or XPS, which is a different driver at that point. But it will ensure that the services on this server that is actually sharing the print server, if you're able to print to there, then hey, the print spooler is working fine. That takes that out of the equation. Any other questions or doubts? What about, I'm sorry, what about printing from safe mode? Is that just to see if, you know, to eliminate any other applications so, that might be a problem? To eliminate any other drivers that may be interfering with the actual print drivers themselves, it will, obviously limit the amount of drivers and or devices that it's gonna be recognizing. Usually, for instance, it won't even in install the full video drivers. It'll only give you VGA 256 colors. And if you choose the one without networking, it won't even allow you to get out in, onto the network. It won't even give you the network drivers. So it boots up with bare minimum drivers. So if there is an interference, you're able to then decipher what it is from there. You can disable maybe certain things that you recently installed to see if that fixed the issue. Any other questions or doubts? next one here if you can help me out please uh green poor print quality in general garbled characters on paper cancel all print jobs in the queue and try printing a different document from the same application <coughs> print using different application is usb cable securely connected at both ends power down printer by pressing a reset button Update printer drivers. Printer might need servicing. Wrong print colors. Some paper is designed to print only on one side. Try flipping the paper over. Adjust the quality of print. For an inkjet printer, try cleaning the ink cartridges and collaborating uh, the printer. For a laser printer, try collaborating the printer. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. As we see here for the garbled characters, right away they're asking you to cancel everything and try printing something from the same exact application just to ensure maybe what's going on if it is the application itself. Print then using another application. And obviously we want to most likely with ease to identify the issues, not the driver, print the test page directly from the OS itself. We have uh, also on the right side here, which is one of the things that I like uh, is where they point out that one side of that paper isn't able to print. Does anyone know why and what they're talking about? Some papers are designed to print on only one side. Some special inkjet printers had uh, like that plastic on one side. Or, uh, that is correct. The photo paper. ones, the photo quality paper, uh, usually is since it is on that side, the glossy side, which is making it look like if it was a, a real uh, quality picture, can only print on that side. So it won't print. 
any questions or doubts. Next one here, you can help me out, please, Marcus. Poor print quality for laser printers can be caused by printer drivers, application, windows, or the printer. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, poor print quality for laser printers. Unplug, unplug the printer and allow to cool for 30 minutes. Rock or replace the toner cartridge. Econo mode uses less toner might be on, so turn it off. The paper quality might not be high enough. It might need cleaning. Ensure the printer does not require routine maintenance. The laser drum might need replacing. Distorted images can be caused by foreign material. If a page has a gray background, the image drum is worn out and needs replacing. And ghosted images are usually caused by a problem with the image drum. Thank you. So as we see here for laser printers, there's a plethora of things that we need to do in reference to actually letting it cool down and everything, believe it or not, that will help. But at the same time, it, it can be that there is an issue with certain components in there. Why would I want it to cool down? What's cooling down? Can somebody explain to me what's cooling down? It's the drum is cooling down. The drum? Is yeah, the drum, and the the drum gets hot? Yeah. Well, the, the fuser the assembly, right? The fuser yes, drum. The fuser, the fuser assembly itself is the one that uh, is actually very, very hot. And he is the one that we're allowing to get cooled down. There may be issues with that fuser assembly itself. Therefore, when you turn it off, similar to the old cars, uh when the coil used to go bad and if you let it the coil cool down hence now that it, the, the component has cooled down it starts to work again same type of concept now that i've allowed the fuser to cool down it starts printing good and with good qualities when it starts getting too hot it starts having the exact same problem as for rocking or replacing the toner that's basically uh, what we usually do, even when we first come out, hopefully we need to check. It has a little strip, plastic strip in, inside that actually releases the toner that's in there. Because you could only imagine when it is packed and shipped, if it didn't have this little plastic strip that seals it, it will only be throwing toner all over the place. Now that you have released it, you should be as any carbon, just like your actual carbon, when you go and you compress it, you can make diamonds. But in this case, hopefully you're just making charcoal. It has that powder that creates and it creates little rocks in there. So you need to shake it around so it becomes dust again. It's basically what they're trying to explain to you in reference to the actual econo mode. You'll be surprised how many people turn this on and or lower the paper quality uh, where or buy lesser quality paper where they get issues, or even worse, they buy too much high grade or printer paper that's not even meant to be going into this type of printer. Questions or doubts? If you got blank, completely white pages, out of toner is the first thing we should be thinking about. Unless if it's a brand new toner, can somebody tell me what exactly might be the problem? I just said it about five seconds ago. Yeah, that plastic strip you just described. Yeah. So just fair warning, if you do hear that all of a sudden they replaced it, it's completely still printing. Double check that they actually <laughs> took off the little seal because a lot of them love to put it in with it still. And at the same time, now that it is sealed, make sure that we shake it around, loosen those things, break the little rocks of carbon that are inside and, and make it into dust. And it should hopefully be re ready to go. If not, try a diagnostic print itself to see and eliminate that it is not the application that is giving the issue. Now that I did a print page from the actual uh, OS, or if the, it has the capability of it itself doing one, then you obviously 
will be able to test that there is no issues with the printer. If not, check the actual power supply itself. The power supply unit, you could actually check, which a lot of times you're not going to be touching that. But you could only imagine that the power supply unit is converting, right, from AC to DC. And we even heard that from AC to DC, he's going, that puppy's going almost up to how many volts? Anybody remember? Negative 1,000. Yeah, from all the way up to negative 1,000. Hence, please, unplug before we touch these things. <laughs> It'd be best to have like a printer on a separate power source, just like plugged in the wall by itself. Yes, you want usually you want kind of you either have it on a power strip. You, you see that I keep on using the power strip word. I'm not saying power surge protector. You got a 99.9 chance that these things will take out a power surge protector. It's going to pop the little fuse that's there because it meant to have so many watts. So if we remembered our little watts equation, this puppy is going to be pulling a lot of watts. Right, so that, my friends, is the ice cream truck a little bit late? I'm not sure what happened there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Question before we... No, I was just reiterating. It's best to have it plugged into its own power socket separate from everything else. Mm -hmm. And we should ensure also that that actual socket can take the load. As we know, sometimes the actual socket itself is not even provisioned to even handle a load of an actual laser printer. You'd be surprised how many people try to actually put it somewhere where it cannot be. Hmm. So that's blank pages. We'll continue with uh, the rest, which is the 30 printouts and everything else in an hour, which would be, uh, I believe. I should be hopefully be able to see that again. Yes. All right. <clears throat> As for our, we mentioned already the blank, I believe we we're going on to our dirty printouts. If, uh, obviously, we said if it gets through the fuser, it must adhere. So it must be as as clean as possible. That paper shouldn't come out dirty at all. If you see it, that it's it's a white piece of paper that comes out basically with a, I we like to call it a little bit gray tone and or it's kind of smudged or even worse. It is that bad and it actually just comes right off itself. It could be that the fuser itself is the problem. We can sometimes try to clean the actual uh, the paper tray or the area. Maybe it's just containing too much of the toner, but usually nine out of 10 times, if it's doing that type of thing, it is not reaching the proper temperature, temperature itself. So it itself is failing. As for ghosting, that is an image that's in the background. So whatever you just finished printing is still there, but obviously the new printout is there, is on the foreground. It can be that it itself needs to cool down and or that we can maybe try to shake the toner itself, maybe change the landscape as some people like to do to see if that removes the actual a ghosting, but a lot of these times, this thing is a one inclusive little one stop. What I mean on the small ones, the toner, the drum and everything that contains, it's all one unit, it's called the cartridge. There is some of them that do have the actual unit broken into pieces where the actual toner is going in here, the actual then uh, other housing is on the other one, or sometimes they even have it where in the back, you can actually just replace just only the toner po portion of it, and then the actual part with the photo center drum is on the other side of the unit. We have to be able to identify what exactly is the problem with these things. In the cases of actual virtual white lines, that can be that the actual toner is clogged. As I said, it is carbon, therefore it can create little rocks inside. So we need to be able to shake it, believe it or not. As I stated before, be very careful with these things. This is photosensitive drum. Once again, if you leave it exposed to too much sunlight by mistake or regular light, it will damage the drum. And you won't have any more white lines, you just have black lines instead. 
questions so far? Is there any kind of lighting for the office that the printer's in that would be preferable to make it less damaging? Well, like one way is, yeah. is, is pretend like if you're sunbathing. In other words, if you need to, to expose it to light, make it so that the light is above it and so that when you're opening maybe the tray and you're trying to do spin that little wheel, that it is actually facing down. In other words, is the exposed body is actually facing down here where you're actually pulling back the lever and trying to twist it to maybe try to diagnose what the issue is. And so that since the light is really hitting the top, which still has a plastic on top, you're and it's down here, it's really not making that much damage to it at all at that point. Make make sense compared to me flipping it over and the light that's above me is hitting now that exposed area when I pull back and try to move it to see if there's a problem when it's cleaning it. Yeah, so you just need something to block the light, like an umbrella or something like that. It doesn't matter well, if it's crescent. Even if you go like this, for instance, now now the light's not hitting it direct. As long as it's not hitting it direct, since I'm opening the lid here in the bottom and it's it's mm -hmm. it's right above me, the light's not hitting it directly to here. As long as there's no obviously window right behind you. I always prefer to do it near the IDF closet or inside uh, some sort of closet where minimum light is is ex exposing to it. That's just me. I've already seen some of them get damaged. Some people say it never gets damaged, but I never risk it. Those things cost a lot of money. So it, it, it doesn't depend if it's fluorescent lights or incandescent or anything like that. Light is light. Light is light. That is correct. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Blotchy print. This states here uneven, disperse of toner, shake the toner, check fuser rollers. Okay. What they're talking about in reference to the actual uh, blotchy print and the uneven disbursement as we said again it could be those little uh, rocks itself so you need to shake the toner again as you notice and when a lot of people probably always thought funny when the IT guy came to your thing and the first thing he did was show, shake the toner cartridge mm -hmm. how many times did I just say that one of the re resolutions to this is go shake the little to toner cartridge because it looks like it the it has crystallized is what's going on the other thing that we want to be able to confirm now is to be able to check the fuser rollers itself. It could be that the fuser rollers themselves has gotten dirty itself and it has or has a foreign object be inside the drum or inside the actual fuser rollers themselves. As we said, yes, you may be shaking your head. You can't understand how can a foreign object in there get in there. Humans are interfering with this device and or I say interfering, but obviously interfacing or using this device. And unfortunately, they're putting paper clips and don't they don't, I don't even know how to, it's a printer. I don't know what's paper clip doing there. I don't ask me. Uh, they're putting uh, staplers or, or I don't know why somewhere in there. Uh, they're put, I don't even, what was one, one, I think it was chicken, chicken, you know, Kentucky fried chicken or any fried chicken has those little crumbs. So you could tell the chicken crumb kind of thing. I always thought that was cute. That was my the best one. <laughs> but once again, never underestimate an ID10T error. error. I did it hopefully explain, explain to you what an ID10T error or what a user error is versus a software error versus a hardware error. Everyone know? No, yes, no, please, maybe so. I never used that word yeah. before. Yep. I did use it before. I did tell you about it sure. too, though. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> in reference to the user, he is imaginative and sometimes he's unaware of how good he is. Incomplete characters is the next area here, which is adjusting the actual print. Third density itself in the actual settings. The crease pages, although it says restart printer, I always find that beautiful. Uh, Try a different type of paper. Check if they overstuffed. You'll be surprised how, how many times these people get frustrated with these printers because they have to put more paper. So what do they do? They over, overstuff the actual tray, which creates too much pressure. Hence, obviously, then it creases the page. Or it could be the actual rollers themselves that are creating the problem. 
the rollers are the pickup rollers and or the actual feed rollers that are inside. And as I stated before, <clears throat> these devices have things that are meant to be maintenance, just like your tires and or oil, or whatever on a car. These things have several parts that should be replaced after so many times being printed. Next area here, it says is the, uh, sorry, after crease spaces, actual paper jams. Once again, restart the printer. I find that one very cute. Although the paper jam, if you know where exactly it is, that would not help you because that actually could major, may, maybe actually feed it even further. So when it comes to crease pages and or paper jams, the first thing you want to do is double check exactly what is the issue before you restart that printer because of the fact that it can create more issues for you. Never, ever, ever reach in before, obviously, unplugging the actual printer. Ensure that you actually check the manufacturer themselves. And these fancy printers sometimes even tell you how and where to open what door to be able to release the paper jam. Follow the actual printout screens that it has there, the little GUI interface, and it'll tell you exactly step by step. For instance, it may say lift lever two. And as soon as you say you open lever two, it tells you, lift lever seven that is hidden inside and each one is labeled to be able to facilitate the process and exactly identify the, the place that you want to be able to remove the paper jam. Lastly is our actual pulling multiple sheets. This one I always find cute. Believe it or not, for those that maybe never uh, have bought bounty and are, are used to this, uh, obviously, Paper gets wet easily. <clears throat> and if it is in high humidity, it will stick to each other. So it may be the cause. Make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. All right. Second thing is <clears throat> it can be that they overstuff the marshmallow again. Once again, it's too much in paper in there. The tray is getting pushed. And then when it pulls, it's pulling two papers at a time. Any questions or doubts? Hey, look, it says what I said. Sorry about that. No questions or doubts? Everybody okay with all of these? So let's play the game on the next one. You can please help me out here, Alvarez. <clears throat> uh, poor print quality, inkjet and impact printers. Poor print quality for inkjet printers. Check the paper type. Check ink levels. Remove and reinstall the cartridge. Follow printer's documentation to clean each nozzle. Clean sponge near carriage rest. Uh, for poor, quint, uh, poor print quality for impact printers, check the ribbon. Replace if needed. Check the print head for dirt. Uh, spacing on the print head might need to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As we see here in the inject printers themselves, the paper type itself can create a problem. As we know, these inkjet printers are meant to be running on a certain type of paper, specifically if it is for the photo quality and even for regular pa printer paper itself. The ink levels, we usually have the manufacturer and or the actual uh, print drivers with the actual print queue can actually go in there and check the current status of it, depending on obviously the driver's capabilities. If not, you can put the aftermarket software or the not aftermarket, the actual manufacturer's software to be able to, to diagnose any issues with it and or clean it. Next is the actual print quality of impact printers. The actual ribbon itself can be the problem, even if it's a brand new ribbon. Because of those that maybe remember what a typewriter is, it has that ribbon in there. And so that the ribbon is like the old tape, cassette tapes where it's feeding it through. Therefore, if the actual thing, which is the ribbon tape, is not placed in and locked in correctly so that the tape can be pulled, it's not going to be feeding properly. So after several types, times that it goes over the actual ribbon, since it's not moving, the ink starts being uh, poor quality. It can actually be dirt because of the fact that most of these things are in the warehouse, as we mentioned, these impact printers are meant to be in the warehouse areas to or and 
an office area where there's a lot of these forms being filled out. So these little microscopic pieces of dust is coming out of the little circles on the track. What I mean by little circles, for those that know the multi-part forms, they have a little track on the side that has punched holes. God only knows why, but somehow, some way, it's like hitting the lottery. No matter how hard you try, the manufacturer can punch the holes perfectly, but somehow the actual little circles are not all gone. So it is punched but the actual circle is still, if the original hole or paper that's there is still there, the little circles, feel me out. So it starts falling inside every time it feeds through this printer, all those little particles start falling. And even if you clean the circles, it actually creates dirt and or buildup. A lot of these things also get worn because of the fact that this thing has little rubber nipples on the edges of the track. It has those things that pulls up the paper into the actual compartment. Just like the, the actual tires, as we had said in the pickup rollers, these things get worn down itself. And there is an actual maintenance kit that you can purchase so you can be able to replace. And voila, now it starts picking up the paper once again. It can actually be the motor and or the thing that actually picks and feeds it. So therefore, it is moving and it is a pick. Sorry, it's not moving correctly, but it is picking the paper up as it's supposed to. In other words, since it's not actually going up at a rate that it's supposed to. It can be the motor itself and or something wrong with the actual device. Hey, that's apparently what I just said. I was about to elaborate, but that's what it says. Questions? Everyone okay? Feeling better, warm and cozy. Everyone knows printers. Woohoo! All right, let's play. Someone can tell me what is this type of problem? Wait, what is what is what? This one right here, this picture. Uh-huh. You should all be able to see the pictures right now. Somebody can tell me what is this picture? Is it ghosting? Charging Corona, debris, fuser, worn out printer, printer driver, toner, jam, dirty roller. What do you think? I'm going to look at it again. That's um, ghosting? Looks like gobbledygook. Yeah, some letters yeah, you, are dog, others are yeah, other. Yeah, some are good, some are bad. We have doubts on that one. What's this one look like? Ooh. What problem? We have these different problems here. And we have um, this as the actual image, which looks very interesting to, to say the least. Is it? Well, this oh, yeah, J equals. That's the one with the gobbledygook on it. So is does this like look re readable? No, no. Really, it looked like it was printed over twice. Okay. Out of everything here, from what we can think of, we have a ghosting, charging corona, debris, worn out printer, printer driver, fuser, printer jam, toner, empty, or dirty roller. Do we think that the toner is empty? No, because it doesn't look like a... Um, okay. The, well, the toner's not empty because it's not a blank page. Okay. Right. Do we think it's a dirty, dirty roller? Well, there's lots of characters on it, so I would think not. I think the first one's See? a worn out printer ribbon. This one? Uh, yeah. I yeah, that's what that one looks like. Yeah, because it's not consistent. <clears throat> okay. So back to our yeah. second picture. We were able to eliminate, it's not this. We were able to eliminate wasn't this and it wasn't this. Do we think it's paper jam, this guy? No, I think driver. that might, that's what I was gonna say. It might, it's the, it looks like the driver, I guess. Yeah, because that looks okay, like this. code. Yes, yeah. that's what I was trying to say. Oh, the, the J equals and the mm -hmm. I less than sign. Do, you, you do understand that this is perf perfectly written right now. Do you understand why it's perfectly written right now? What do you mean by perfectly written? It's written how the machine understands it. Thank you. 
And since we understand, hopefully, what the computer understands, he has the wrong dictionary. He has, I would say, the English dictionary. And the person is talking to him, most likely in some type of foreign language. And he's uh, trying to enunciate exactly what that person just said. And since we know that is, hopefully, by that, gives you a big clue. That is your driver. We need to update the language. Drivers, your drivers are incorrect. If it yeah. doesn't have the correct driver, then it's unable to obviously, obviously speak the correct language to the printer. Therefore, you get this. It spoke exactly what it ne needed to, but the printer had no idea mm -hmm. except for this is what he said. That's why it's drawing so, writing so many characters. Yes, it's using all the characters it has had, and all the zeros and ones that it received is equivalent to that. Um, all the zeros and ones that I receive equals that. That one has to update the print driver. That sounds correct. Next picture here we have. That's a dirty roller. That's what it looks like, a dirty roller. Okay, everyone agree, a dirty roller. <clears throat> Two dirty rollers going once. Ooh. No. All right. So, oh, you know what? That could be the fuser too, right? If the fuser is what's putting the picture on the paper or, but see that line in the middle? I thought that line in the middle was a transfer corona thing. Mm -hmm. You guys tell me. What do you Everybody guys say? Agree? You think fuser? Paper jam, toner's empty, or dirty roll, or with dirty roller we got wrong. Debris oh, no, that's going to be fuser, because that castle on the bottom will be the corona. <clears throat> Debris is on the transfer corona. I think that's got to be fuser, that one that we're messing with now. This one, fuser, yep. going once, fuser going twice. Fuser is sold to the man in the corner. If we notice the actual picture itself is what? dirty smudged mm -hmm. Remember what i said so so the image semi stuck on there but part of it is still smudging on top of it since it's continuously doing this now the actual orange roller with inside the actual fuser has gotten dirty and it's sticking to the actual roller hence here is your dirty piece of paper so that rubber sweep is not cleaning the um drum right of the toner there is an orange humongous iron roller inside the fuser that's meant to melt and make it adhere, ad adhere to the paper. If it wow. adheres to the paper and, 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 and as an iron does when you, when you iron something and you want to put it like a sticker. So just pretend nope. if it doesn't, if it doesn't stick to the sticker, it's going to stick to the roller. So the roller mm. starts building up dust since it's not heating up properly and it starts creating this gray mess. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Gotcha. Diego? Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Will you, will you do, will you do the, the, uh, the one at the bottom in the middle? Because it's bothering me. Which <laughs> can, one, this one? can you ask him what that one in the middle is in the bottom? With the printer, uh -uh, all the way at the bottom. Oh, this one? Can we get it out? Can we just go ahead and get that off the board because that one's okay. bothering. <laughs> okay, we said this was print Thanks. driver. Okay, all right, and then this one we said was a worn, worn ribbon. ribbon. Mm -hmm. So next picture here. Anybody want to take a wild guess? Um, That's toner. Yeah. Does empty oh, yep. empty toner was it? Yeah, definitely empty toner, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing. <clears throat> next <throat> one here, next picture we have is that's ghosting. Okay. Everyone agree? Yeah, I'll go with that. All right, next picture. I'll let somebody else answer because I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. Is that oh, a, that's the easy one. That's a dirty roller. I think so. Yep. No, it's the charging no, corona. Just, just because the rollers the picked up all the transfer corona. Ink. Charging corona two for charging corona or transfer corona. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that correctly. One in one was that one in one? I got two one in one. Is that a true statement? A charging corona, a debris on the transfer corona, and one for dirty and two for dirty roller. Anybody want to? Pretty sure the one on the bottom left, that castle one, is the debris on the transfer corona. That happens when that wire gets stuff on it. The white mm. lines. Uh, charging corona, I don't know. <clears throat> so well, what A, B, or C? Charging okay. Corona. All right. You got me. Definitely the Charging Corona, if you do realize, if the Charging Corona is not able to create that actual variances in voltage, you're going to have that problem where you're going to, you're not going to have, sorry. Oh. How do I get out of this stupid thing? Oh, there it goes. You, you're not going to have that difference in voltage, hence, you get a black image since there is no difference in voltage. Next one. Because oh, it puts toner on the entire page rather than just the image. Well, yeah, because there is, everything has the exact same voltage. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it, it all stays there and sticks to there. And since the paper is charged positive and mm -hmm. the other one's all negative, as soon as it hits it, it all, all the toner goes over there. It's There's laying no there toner on the page rather than the positive and negative attracting the image. Attracting so there is the no, image. Yeah, because the image is not working because the part mm -hmm. that creates the image is not working. All it's yep. doing is just leaving it with that. All right, next one here. <clears throat> I've said it. I know that what I said is correct. So remember somebody was mm -hmm. paying attention. I was just about to say I'm about to Transfer Corona. I did. Transfer Corona. Mm -hmm. All right. And last was a dirty roller. If we notice here, although this is in another language, it looks like we'll notice that the roller keeps on repeating itself. You see there? That's when, since the roller is. At, Make sense? That's, no. mm -hmm. that's that's is a Persian language. That's my language. It looks like yeah. It looks like I'm not. Is that Arabic or Hebrew? I'm not sure what what it is. This is a Persian. This is a Persian. Persian. Language. Persian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Farsi. Cool. And now we know. Oops. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> Glad somebody got onto that one. Pretty sure I just went over everybody's head uh, for the rest of you. Hopefully by now we should be able to compare and contrast the different types of printers, identify the common steps for installing these things, the actual common pitfalls when we're installing them, and the problems that come up with them and how to describe to solve them themselves. Any questions or concerns before we conclude this session?